Uh, I've just got a couple of naughty questions at the end. <laughs> feel, feel free, feel free not to answer. But um, you mentioned CBD there, um, and there's no reason why you should have looked into this. But I went to the Isle of Wight mushroom farm, where they're growing various mushrooms, and one of them is called Turkey Tail. Ah, yes. And this does seem to have anti-cancer properties. So Rimmer the dog, for example, came in with a nasty malignant tumour on his lip. It was going to cost one and a half thousand pounds to be removed. The owner couldn't afford it. So Alex at the Isle of Wight Mushroom Farm gave him a bottle of uh, tincture of turkey tail. And within a month, the tumour had, had gone. Uh, absolutely incredible. Um, and I've, I've also heard it used in uh, colon cancer and possibly other ones. So one to watch. And another fascinating one I've come across, and I know nothing yeah. about it. It's called... Oh, please. Please. With, with, with uh, turkey tail, because turkey tail is something that I, that I highly recommend in my protocols uh, as well. Uh, and and it, it, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, I, I've, I've, I've heard these uh, anecdotal stories as well um, in, in, in dogs uh, responding to turkey tail. There is, there's, there's, again, a ton of preclinical research on turkey tail. And what's fascinating about turkey tail mushroom is that it's, it, it's, it's an immunomodulator uh, as well. And, and, and it, and it, it stimulates the. My understanding is that it stimulates the immune system to produce more cytotoxic cells, immune cells that attack and fight cancer. Uh, you know whether C it's CD8 cytotoxic, exactly, cytotoxic yeah. T cells or natural killer cells yeah. that will yeah, then yeah. Help, help the patient fight fight cancer. And so I do suggest uh, take, taking that as, as a supplement. Uh, if you have cancer, I, I think the whole area of, of, of medicinal mushrooms, I think is fascinating as well, whether it's so, reishi, so reishi, reishi yeah. mushrooms, lion's mane, uh, chaga. Um, I could tell you some stories, it's not for this video, but I could tell you some amazing stories about lion's mane, uh, yeah. quite, quite neuro regeneration stories that are really quite, quite, I think quite, that's another incredible area of, yeah. of, of research that, that, that we should be, we should be looking into yeah. and research. So, so uh, the, the guy at the Isle of Wight Mushroom Farm, Alex, he, he, he makes turkey tail because it's very woody. You can't chew it. You could grind it, of course, but he actually makes it into a tincture. So he basically soaks it in vodka for three months. And, 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 and uh, you know, you end up with about 30%. You don't need much. Um, and he, he thinks that you get more out of it in the tincture form than you do just dried. So I think that's an area for, for future research, but it makes sense that the alcohol can get more of the intracellular component of the of the turkey tail out. That that, that that's absolutely that's, that's you, you, you you get more of, of, of the bioactive compounds out. Uh, and I believe that you know in, in each of these I find uh, whether it's turkey tail mushroom or some of the other mushrooms is is there there's such a rich variety of, of bioactive compounds, yeah. the polyphenols and so on, the yeah. turpentines that, that, you know, with, with the alcohol, you can extract some of these yeah. really quite nicely and, and get the benefit, yeah. get the benefit of, of, of it through extraction. We really need more artisan growers. There should be like a mushroom grower at the end of a, in every suburb. So you can just trot along and you know, get some nice fresh lion's mane and slice it up and eat it for your tea. Um, it's a pity that it's not more readily available. And the other one, just just to close, really, uh, um, Artemisius annus is another one I've started looking at. Um, That's right. Yeah, it, it, um, it's got another more popular name. I can't remember now, but again, it does seem to have anti-cancer properties. I know nothing about it, but what's all, fascinating? All, yeah, cheap, what's fa cheap, readily available. Exactly. So Artemisia annua is is another one of these. Uh, so that that's a plant that actually won the Nobel Prize. It did. Two thousand fifteen. Well. Yeah. Exactly, and yeah. and it's been it's widely used uh, as an anti-malarial mm. agent, mm. and it's being looked at for cancer. Uh, there is a lot of preclinical research now building uh, on Artemisia and cancer. Now, some of some of the compounds, bioactive compounds in the plant Artemisia annua, um, have been extracted and and sold as supplements on their own. So that's Artemisinin, Artemisinin is one of them, and Artesunate is another one. And so uh, you can get either the whole plant, so you can get supplements of the whole plant where you have the variety of, of the bioactive compounds, or you can get... Just, just, eat, just eating the leaves, basically. Yeah, or you, you could make tea, tea out of mm -hmm. it. And so it, it's something that I've been trying to, to incorporate, uh, but patients, they just, you know, they don't, they don't, most patients don't know about it. 
uh, and they find it very confusing. And 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 you know, when it's something that you've never heard of, it's always hard to to to, to convince someone to try. Uh, but I think this is another one that that it's a sleeper. It's not, it's not well known in North America. It's it's much more known outside of North America. It, it, that would be my experience. Uh, a lot of the research. Italy, I think, it's fairly well known. Italy, um, it, yeah, in other countries uh, around the world. And again, a big one. Um, what, I'll tell you a little story, a quick story mm-hmm. about about Ar- uh, Artemisia. Um, when the COVID pandemic hit. Uh, people in other countries started taking Artemisia annua to treat COVID-19, and it yeah. does treat COVID. And so the WHO came out and said, "Don't take it uh, because you don't know what you're getting, and you, you know, you, you know, if you're if you're taking the plant, you don't." Anyways, it, so there this was an advice. This is this is the, this is the plant that won the Nobel Prize along with ivermectin in 2015. But apart exactly. from that, yes, <laughs> exactly, and and and, and so. We, we've seen this. We've seen this before that uh, that cheap things that people could use to treat COVID-19, yeah. whether it was vitamin D, yeah. which was very effective, oh, yeah. whether it was Artemisia annua, whether it was hydroxychloroquine, ivermectin, zinc, uh, quercetin, these things that, that people yeah. used successfully to treat COVID-19 were attacked, were maligned by the, by the various authorities. Uh, and it, it's just such a shame that 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 that, that happened. You know, we, we refer to them as early treatments yeah. for COVID nineteen. If you had you know started some of these very early on, you would not have. Oh had, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, 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 I've talked to doctors in Africa who've. There was one hospital in Zimbabwe where they didn't have any oxygen, didn't know oxygen, so they, they they used they used ivermectin as an early treatment, and the oxygen saturations increased within about six to twelve hours, just on just with, without any oxygen therapy um very very hard to argue against yeah exactly so artemisia was one one of these uh was plants that that was maligned uh you know when when the covid 19 pandemic hit but but you're absolutely right another incredible uh plant to look at in in cancer i did try to grow some last year it got to about oh, really? that high then it died yeah so <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to order the, the seeds are absolutely tiny Oh, the wow. smallest seed you've ever seen. I'm going to try again as soon as uh, as soon as spring comes and see if I can uh, get some nice bushy uh, Artemisia growing. We're also well, going to try and grow it in Africa, in, in, in all the back gardens in Africa, because, uh, you know, if, if the local population in rural areas can't get to uh, medical help sometimes, and if they get malaria, then making tea out of Artemisia could give them the extra hour or two they need to get to the clinic to get to get proper treatment. So there's no reason why it just shouldn't be everywhere. And again, oh, absolutely. I it's just a matter of encouraging that. Dr. Marcus, I am just blown away by that information and how clearly it was expressed. Um, we will put any links, of course, to, to the sites that you want b- below this video, if uh, people want to contact you or, and of course, links to the Substack and uh, Twitter and uh, X and all these things. But, um, I mean, th- thank you for, for what you're doing. <laughs> thank you for this information. And uh, I, well, I know it's come at some personal cost. Well, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. I, 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 love, you know, I, I love these topics. I, lo- I love talking about uh, especially repurposed drugs because that, yeah. that's something that, that I think gives, gives a lot of people hope. Uh, and 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 it gives it gives people options. It it, it, yeah. it gives them uh, yeah. more tools to to yeah. help their health. And it doesn't have to be cancer. You know, it could be it could be autoimmune diseases. It, yeah. it could be various you know inflammatory conditions, chronic inflammatory conditions. But I, I think repurposed drugs are such a fascinating field. And, and thank you very much for uh, yeah. for this conversation. No, not at all. And it's the whole risk benefit thing, isn't it? If the risk is small and the benefit is potentially there, what the heck? Absolutely. You know, let, let, let's just do it. And but I think now, this is this is the sorry. future. I, I think this is this should be the future of medicine. You know, I, I, I think it, it we, we have to move away from the sort of the, the what's pharmaceutical in what pharmaceutical industry puts in front of yeah. us and what the pharmaceutical industry tells the doctors that those are the only options that they can give their patients. I, I, I do think. I do hope it's the future of medicine. I'm not hundred percent convinced but it's really we are fighting for that to be the future of medicine i hope so too yeah wonderful thank you so much brilliant thank you very much fascinating thank you